So let's just take a moment and discuss designing the content for our term projects and utilizing Adobe Cooler. So one of the first things that I want to mention is that our experience in this course obviously is simulated. You're not really working with a real client. Um, now, it's not simulated in that um, your term project could very well be eventually be an actual web page, a website that you upload to the internet. That's that's fine. But what I mean by simulate is normally what as a web designer you're going to be working for a client, you're going to be working for a company, you're going to be working within a firm. And I say that what we're doing in this class is simulated because you're actually going out and getting content from perhaps other websites and putting it into a website. That's a simulated experience because you would never do that in the real world. The client would come to you with the raw content. They would come to you and say, this is what I want to use for my logo. This is what I want to use for the text on the opening page. This is what I want to use for um, the text and videos for all of my other pages. And it's up to you as a web designer to design that content for viewing on the web. So it's simulated in that you're actually going out and just figuring out what content you want to use and put it in there. But that experience of actually working with a client and figuring out, you know, what content that they would want to use, helping you get that that type of information out of them, you know, that's something that you're going to be getting as you continue on with this web design certificate or web development certificate. I will get into that more if you take Co-op 2120 with me, web editors. We actually, I actually put you through an experience where you're actually working with a real client, and they're going to be. Uh, you're going to be working with them trying to figure out what types of content they want for their pages. But again, that in a sense is still simulated as well. Um, so anyways, what is content? Well, when you think of content, that's just like, think of it as images, text, but also, you know, colors and stuff too. So raw content would be just like the raw text. And then in this course, we're going to be utilizing CSS to visually design that content. So that would be colors, font choices, how the size of, of words, the placement, of content on the page. We're going to be utilizing CSS for that and you're getting into that this week. Um, all of the content should always add value to the user's experience. What if the content isn't adding value? And what's it doing? It's essentially distracting from what it's just distracting them from what they need to do and you want to make sure that you're not doing that. Even though our experience in this class is simulated, I don't want you just to have, you know, funny images that animate for no reason. If that image animates or if that hot pink color is important, then that's fine. Put it in there. Um, but we want to make sure that all of our content, whether it's the raw text and the raw videos, but even the visual content, you know, adds value to the user experience. So make sure that you're thinking about that. Um, all content should meet the needs of the user. I've been touching about that in various places, of course, because that's who the, the content is for. It's for the user. So if you have content that's on there that's not meeting their needs, then what's, what are you having it for? Think of your movie genre website and what you're trying to do. Uh, what are the things that your users would need? That Well, they probably have similar tastes that you have. They just want to find out about the, the, the movies. They want to find out about the directors. They want to see what other people say about the videos. They want to have a fun experience learning about those different videos. Those are the things that the users essentially need from the content. So don't be putting stuff in it that doesn't need to be there, basically. And then, guess what? We're going to be utilizing a fun, free tool Adobe Cooler to add to choose our colors for our term project. So let's take a look at some of this stuff. So here on this page is where you're going to find me talking about uh, what to consider when you're adding text and the type of text that you're looking for, where that text should be um, in terms of images, what are the things that you can, should consider in terms of images for your website, um, in terms of color. So we have text, images, color. I don't really touch on video, but we're also going to be adding videos to our website embedding them, but that was just another form of content. So in terms of color, we're going to be utilizing Adobe Cooler to choose our colors. So let's talk about, you know, Adobe Cooler. So let's go ahead and click on the link for Adobe Cooler. This is the amazing free thing that Adobe has given us, and it's such an amazing tool. Basically, Adobe Cooler will basically allow you to go and find fun color palettes that you might want to use for your websites. You get the hexadecimal codes and then you can use that for the code to then change those colors. These colors are web safe. Um, and just look at how the colors fit and just visually you know, work together. Rather than just having a solid red and a solid green that would just be very clashing, we have this nice fun um, color theme called Pie Party for All uh, for, uh, for Coolerus. Anyways, so what I am expecting or 
a good thing to have for your term project is for ha is for you to have an image that really captivates your audience on the home page of your term project. So this is an image that will you can use Cooler for because Cooler can actually go into that image and derive colors from that image, and then you can use the colors for your text or for other things in your website will just basically kind of flow and all work together because they're all being derived from that one image. So what I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you how to pull colors out of an image. Like let's say I was to make, you've heard me talk about Hayao Miyazaki. He's one of my favorite uh, directors for anime. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out colors from an image that I could use for the home page of that website. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on create and then I'm going to choose, so again this is the home page. These are the different um, colors from this swatch but I'm going to click on create and then I'm going to choose from an image. Now I need to upload an image from my computer. I'm going to go find that Hayao Miyazaki image. It's in my images. Where's that? Uh, and I'm going to choose it from the movie Howl's Moving Castle. So this is a, a scene. This is a, a, a just basically kind of like a wallpaper that I have um, that represents Howl's Moving Castle. Great movie. I definitely recommend looking it up. But what it's done now is it has pulled out colors from this image and given them to me down here. So now what I want to do is save my theme so that I can then get the colors from, from this image. So i got to sign in. Gonna, if you don't have an Adobe ID, you can create one for free. I do have one. I can give it a title. So now that I have my theme, did everybody get that? So I basically saved my theme that I just made that was pulled from that image. And now that I have these fun colors, I would decide how I want to design my, my page from these colors. Like maybe this color could be used for the background of my whole page. Maybe I would use this for my H1 text on my page. Maybe I could use this for my link, uh, for, for how my links are on my page. Maybe I could use this for my H2s. Maybe I could use this for a border. Maybe I could use this for, let's say my page was a two, uh, a one column centered layout. Maybe my, my background for my whole body would be this color, but then all of the content in the centered one column would be this color. I don't know, it's totally up to you. So now where do you get these colors? Well, you can come over here to um, make changes. So that's basically like this edit button. Think of this just kind of like an, so make changes to the seam and view color values. So we're gonna click on that. And now we have these hexadecimal colors here that we could put into use for our colors. So now let's try to use some of these colors that we have, that I've been creating. Here's just a simple um, HTML page that I've been working with. I have an embedded style sheet up here at the top, and I'm going to be writing some code here to add in my background image of the house moving castle, house moving castle right here to the to the body, and then I'm also going to be adding in um, colors for my H1 and my H2. Uh, my whole page is within a container, but let's go ahead and just take a look at let's take a look at it real quick. Uh, I have it saved on my desktop in this folder here. I'm gonna, let's open up this page in my browser. Open with Firefox. So here's just my simple page. Uh, I have an H1, I have a H2, just uh, some paragraphs of text that I got from Wikipedia. This is pretty boring, it's just a white background, but what I want is I want my background image uh, to be behind it and then all of this is within a container, a div container, which you're going to be learning about later in the course. So what we can do is I can, let's go ahead and add in my image that I had saved. So I want to add in this house Moving Castle image to this page here. To do that, the, the rule you need to write is background image dash image, then you need to tell it where it is, URL, 
that I know the name of my image is HOWLS dash moving STLV dot JPEG. And your book has covered how to add in background images. So I'm just going to refresh my page. So now I have this background image to my page. But now what I want to do is I want to use lies those colors that Adobe Cooler pulled out of that image to stylize my H1 and my H2. So let's say I wanted to use the pink for my H1. So I'm going to select the hexadecimal code. The rule is color. They need the pound sign. Save it. Let's refresh my page. And now I am using utilizing this, I'm utilizing this pink that's kind of being pulled out of the roof here. I can do the same thing with early life. Maybe I want to use um, let's say uh, I guess the blue is fine for our purposes. This is just an example. Color pound. Save it. So now I have that blue. But now I want to fill in my container. One last step. Let's utilize this really nice tan. Copy. And here's my container right here. Save it. So now I have this, you know, just simple home page that's being controlled by embedded CSS. And I'm utilizing the hexadecimal colors from Cooler to control my H1, my H2, and to fill the color of this container. And I'm using a background image for my page. And everything kind of looks like it has its place. Like imagine if I didn't, imagine if these colors were different. So now let's do something that wouldn't look good. So let's say this was red, this was, you don't need the hex. Let's say this was green. This was blue. This isn't going to look good. See, now we're just transported back to the dawn of the internet when people didn't really do a very good job designing things. See, this doesn't really feel like it fits. So let's undo everything we just did. Look how this fits just so much more. Look how this fits just so much more. So that's what I'm talking about. The image that you choose for your home page drives the visual design and then it kind of these colors that will help stick with you and then ideally you could find other images for other pages that are similar color palette to, to what you're using here so that's a way to kind of add some visual design to your pages utilizing Adobe Cooler